too, right? And uh, those are actually kind of familiar benchmark values, right? This is 45 degrees here. So this is a right angle, so this is 135 degrees. Another right angle, so 225 degrees. Just to keep adding 90 degrees, right? And uh, what, 315 degrees here? And that's it. Yeah, so they want it in degrees here. Just put in the numbers and they, they understand that it's degrees? Yeah. Uh, is there is that a real symbol here for us to use? We're trying to find out the square root I guess we don't get it to each side. Let's see, we could do uh, that. Yeah. Doesn't have that pretty tight? Yeah. Enter a list of mathematical yeah. expressions. Yeah. All right, so, well, it would be nicer if we could say degrees, since on the exam you should indicate degree measure with the degree sign. But we don't get the degree sign here, so we're stuck with this, huh? Suppose that's going to be good? Yeah. Um, so I was talking to a student, asking him, uh, why aren't you doing the homework? Great book. Maybe it's better now. I should not complain. Yeah, so over here in 7.5. Now there's somebody got 7. But, uh, pretty thin out here. Like, not even try. <laughs> so, and then here's a bunch of people in progress with zero points. Um, so, just wondering uh, why that wasn't. So I asked the student, and she said, uh, well, because it's, it's, I like doing the problems out of the book, because I can get those right. I can't get these right. <laughs> so in the book, they don't tell you whether you're wrong or right. So that's the difference. You just don't know that you're wrong. You do the, oh, you can read it, look them up in the back. So you, you copy the answers from the back. But you say, oh, yeah, those are right. Well, no, you can validate your work that well, way. You're, you're off by like a, a point so or something. We don't know so what you can be wrong. fairly close to the right answer. But because you didn't put a symbol or a space or whatever, it, it could mark you partially correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very infuriating now. Yeah. 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 Well, how come I always get them all right? <laughs> Don't always get them all right? You only got like what? Three errors from the ones you've done in class? So how about 17? Well, we're working our way backwards here. Okay. All right, so what's going on here? <laughs> All solutions, again, they want degrees. Separate multiple solutions. If there are no solutions, enter no solution. Okay, here you come back here on six, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can divide both sides by six, right? So let's do that just before we even write it down. So two sine squared x uh, minus cosine x minus one equals zero. Now what? Doesn't cosine minus... You want it to be polynomial on either sine or cosine, right? Cosine. Oh. X minus 1 is not equal to sine? Oh, wait, that'd be like minus 1 minus cosine, I think, would equal to sine. Would that equal to negative sine? That's another question. So on the unit circle, when you go out of a distance t here, you end up at a place... This is the point cosine t sine t, right? Yeah. So 
this leg is cosine t, and this leg is sine at right angle, right? Or sine t. And so Pythagoras says then the cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to one, right? That's mm -hmm. the Pythagorean identity mm -hmm. in its most simple form. Which is, you know, x squared plus y squared equals one, one is the equation for the unit circle, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have sine squared, that's one minus cosine squared. So I kind of heard that. But that should be, you know, automatic, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we substitute. And why we, we because we want uh, 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 an expression involving just sine or cosine here. So if we substitute for sine squared in terms of cosine squared, then we have only cosine. Oh, this should be x, right? Can I just clarify something? Yeah. Um, you took this, you backed out the six. Did you divide out the six? Under yeah, I divided both sides by six. Yeah, you could factor it out and then divide, or yeah. the idea is if you have uh, an equation, you can divide both sides of the equation by the same thing, and why not divide by six? Zero divided by six is still zero on the right side, right? Okay, so now this is negative two cosine squared x minus cosine x, now uh, plus one equals zero. Minus. Well, two minus oh, one yeah. is one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a squared there. <laughs> That's better. Now what? Um, substitute for you. Oh, yeah. You know, I'd, I'd like my coefficient to be uh, positive here. So I can just multiply both sides by negative 1 and get an equivalent equation like this. 0 times negative 1 is still 0 on the right side, right? So that's an equivalent equation. Then I'm hoping may, maybe this factor is still a factor. Is there yes. Um, so this would have to be cosine <coughs> x and 2 cosine x and 1 and negative 1 somehow. I think this is plus 1 and minus 1. Does that work? Yeah, that yeah. gets us where we want to be, right? So that gives us two equations. One for this is 0, one for that is 0. So either cosine x equals negative 1 or cosine x equals positive 1 half, right? Real quick, how are you able to convert the negative one to the positive one again? I didn't catch that. Uh, from here to here? Yeah. Okay, so I distributed and combined. So I get 2 minus twice cosine squared. I just combined. 2 minus 1 is 1, right? Okay, I see. I'm glad you asked because I tend to just do these things without even thinking about it, so. Yeah. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. So that situation I was talking about before where you're supposed to be one minus either sine or cosine to get sine or cosine on the other side. You know, because like you say there before, cosine squared well, plus square, sine squared right? is equal to one, yeah. right? Yeah. So in a situation where you see how it's one minus cosine squared in this example, yeah. if you had the inverse where it's cosine minus one, would you get like an inverse of sine squared? You would get the negative of sine squared. But that gets squared anyway, so the value is the same? Uh, no. Uh, so um, cosine squared x minus 1 would be negative sine squared x. And it's not the square of negative sine. It's the negation of the square. All right, so it's an order of operations thing? Yeah, makes sense. OK. Uh, so if you like, you could put the square out here. But the square operates on sine x, and then it's negated. Right? Well, that assists us at all in, in our chapter 7 exam, that theory right there, that idea. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so where are we then? You know, go to the unit circle and, and find where you are. <coughs> Cosine is negative one over here, right? Yeah. That's pi. So this implies that um, actually any odd multiple of pi will do. So I'm going to say there are all my solutions. <coughs> but uh, um, we could, we could also say 2k plus 1 times 180 degrees, right? And only k equals 0 will give us a value between 0 and 360. So 
Uh, that's the only one we really care about there. Here, cosine is a half, either here or here. Where are these places? Yeah, this is pi over 3. And this is negative pi over 3, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an equivalent symbol here. My attempt at an equivalent symbol. And uh, that says x is either plus or minus pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, um, which uh, in degrees, you'd say that's um, plus or minus 60 degrees, plus or minus uh, 360k, or 2 pi is 360. And so here, we'll get 180 degrees is between 0 and 360. Here we get um, 60 degrees if 